And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. Welcome to my channel, where we talk about anything related to comic books, like new releases, stories, or video games based on comic books. Shaven seems to have risen in popularity these days, since he's the main villain in the upcoming Marvel's Spider-Man 2 game, and three days ago, the first trailer for Kraven the Hunter was released. And boy, was it cool! Yes, his origin isn't comic accurate, and ATJ doesn't have a Russian accent, but apart from these two, everything seems awesome. Before you watch the movie or play the game, which both come out this October, you might want to find out more about him and his origin in the comics. So, with no further ado, let's start. Now, I'm just going to talk about his first appearance and his creators, so if you're not interested in this, you can just skip this part and go straight to the next chapter. Kraven the Hunter, aka Sergei Kravinov, first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 1, No. 15 in 1964, created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. However, if you read Spider-Man comics that were released after 2019, the version of Kraven in these is not the same as the one from 1964. This new Kraven is actually Kraven's clone, who made his first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 5, No. 16, or if you prefer the legacy numbering, Amazing Spider-Man number 817. He was created by Nick Spencer and Ryan Oatley in 2019. Before we continue, here's a fun fact about his creation. Craven was inspired by Zaroff, or Zaroff, I'm not sure, a character in a short story by Richard Connell. Zaroff was a Russian hunter who hunted people in his private island as a hobby. Sounds kinda similar, right? This story was published in 1924 in the magazine Colliers and it was called The Most Dangerous Game. Craven even uses the title of the story, calling Spider-Man his most dangerous game. Now let's take a look at Kraven's origin story. His real name is Sergei Kravinov, and he was raised in Russia during the early 20th century. Now you're probably thinking, doesn't that mean that he's about a hundred years old? Well, yes, he is. Let me explain. So, Kraven was a hunter, a really good one actually, one of the best. He used weapons, but as time went by, he started fighting with animals with his bare hands. At some point, he met Calypso, a voodoo witch, and stole from her some kind of potion that enhanced his powers and basically gave him the agility, the speed, and the strength of a jungle cat. This potion helped him live a lot more than normal humans do, and that's how he became the vicious and deadly hunter that we all know today. I am warning you what I'm going to say may include spoilers, so I will proceed and you do whatever you decide to do. As you probably know, Kraven has an obsession with Spider-Man. However, before he even met Spider-Man, Kraven used to be an Avenger. Not the type of Avenger you're familiar to, however. <laughs> he was a member of Nick Fury's Avengers in 1959, along with Sabretooth, Silver Sable's father, Bloodstone, and others. Back then, Kraven didn't have powers, but he still was the best hunter in the world. Nick Fury created the Avengers so as to fight the Red Skull, who was apparently alive. Anyways, years later, and after Kraven had stolen Calypso's potion, he went after Spider-Man. His half-brother, the Chameleon, asked Kraven to hunt Spider-Man because he was a threat to Chameleon's crime career. Kraven accepted, but not only so that he could help his brother. He wanted to kill Spider-Man because of his fear of spiders. Some years ago, his mother was sent to an insane asylum and eventually killed herself. After that happened, Kraven suffered from hallucinations of the asylum and the tremendous number of spiders living inside it. Not to mention that Kraven considered Spider-Man the most dangerous game, and he probably wanted to maintain his position as the world's greatest hunter by killing Spider-Man. However, Kraven failed even when Chameleon tried to help him. If you think that he wasn't good enough, you are wrong. Because of Kraven's traps and powers, Spider-Man had to give one of his most intense fights to survive. Kraven and the Chameleon then attacked Iron Man, but were defeated again. Some time later, Kraven joined the Sinister Six, but because they attacked Spider-Man one by one, and not all of them at the same time, they were all defeated. No matter how hard Kraven fought, Spider-Man would always beat him. Kraven was good, but Spider-Man was better. However, all this changed when Kraven actually managed to kill Spider-Man. Well, kinda. 
all the time Scraven failed in his obsession with the wall crawler destroyed his sanity. He had hallucinations of spiders and his only purpose in life was to become Spider-Man superior. He didn't just want to kill him, he wanted to prove that he was better than him. His desire to do so made him use a rifle to kill Spider-Man instead of doing it with his bare hands as he always intended. This whole thing was actually retconned many years later in the limited series Deadpool Back in Black and as it was revealed, Deadpool was the one who told Kraven to use a gun and push him to hunt Spider-Man again. Anyways, after he shot Spider-Man, he actually thought he had killed him and buried him alive. Then he wore his costume and pretended he was Spider-Man to prove that he could do better than the original. And he kinda did when he managed to defeat and trap Vermin, a villain that Spider-Man managed to beat with the help of Captain America, but not by himself. Not to mention that he killed the criminal and sent 15 others straight to the hospital. Spider-Man managed to get out of his grave and went after Kraven. However, Kraven didn't want to fight him, as he had managed to regain his honor by proving he was better, and that's the only thing that mattered to him. Then Kraven released Vermin and told Spider-Man to go after him. Of course, Spider-Man said that he'd come back for Kraven afterwards. Not having anything else to live for, Kraven confessed that he was behind the acts of violence on the criminals and committed suicide. Of course, these are comic books and no one really dies, so this wasn't the end, of course. During the Grim Hunt, Kraven was resurrected by his family in a ritual in which the dead body of Spider-Man was used. Kraven came back, but there was a little problem. They hadn't sacrificed Spider-Man, but his clone, Kane, who took his suit to face Kraven's family instead of Peter. Because of that, the ritual was corrupted and Kraven was cursed to become unable to die unless it was Spider-Man who killed him. Spider-Man then went after Kraven and his family, but this time he wanted to make them suffer. The Kravinovs had tortured and killed people close to Peter, and now it was his turn. Kraven begged Spider-Man to kill him as if this was the only way he could die. Spider-Man refused as he realized that by killing Kraven, he'd become just like him, and he could never heal from such act. So Kraven basically became immortal. However, immortality isn't exactly a gift for someone who doesn't want it. At some point, Kraven took his family to the Savage Land to make them worthy descendants, but eventually killed his children. Kraven even had the High Evolutionary create 87 clones that would grow into adulthood fast so that he could raise them as his children. When the clones became adults, Kraven sent them on a quest to prove if they are worthy. While Kraven's children were on their quest, Kraven came across many heroes like Agent Venom, the Hulk, and Squirrel Girl. Believe it or not, Kraven became friends with Squirrel Girl, who persuaded him to stop hunting Spider-Man. Kraven started thinking about his life and decided to become a hunter of hunters. So yes, Kraven became some sort of vigilante for a while, devoting his life to hunting poachers. However, things changed when one of Kraven's clones came back and revealed that he had killed all the other clones. Kraven was happy with the achievement of his last son and made him part of his plan to fight all the poachers in the jungles. To teach some rich hunters and poachers a lesson, Kraven turned Central Park into a hunting ground and trapped many animal-themed villains inside of it, where they were hunted by hunterbots. These hunterbots were controlled by hunters who were willing to pay a lot of money, but they didn't know that if any damage happened to the robots, it would also happen to them. In that way, Kraven wanted to show them the true dangers of the hand. Many villains and hunters died, which made Spider-Man furious with Kraven. Kraven took advantage of Spider-Man's rage and tried to persuade him into killing him so that the curse would break and he could finally die. However, Spider-Man didn't kill him. He tried to teach him that true strength comes from compassion and not violence. When Kraven realized how wrong he was, he freed all the prisoners and wore a copy of Spider-Man's costume. He fully understood Spider-Man's ideals and became like him in spirit. Then he pretended to be Spider-Man so that his son could see him and kill him. His death was by his own hand, since he wanted it to happen, meaning that it was by the hand of the spider, since Kraven learned to be like him. The curse broke and Kraven could finally die. After his father's death, Kraven's last son took his place, becoming the new Kraven.
In this video, I mentioned some stories that you may want to check out for yourself. So, which books do I recommend? Mighty Marvel Masterworks, Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 2, The Sinister Six, Craven's First Appearance, and The Attack of the Sinister Six, The Amazing Spider-Man, Craven's Last Hunt, Spider-Man's Apparent Death by the Hands of Craven, The Amazing Spider-Man, Grim Hunt, Craven's Future Action, The Amazing Spider-Man, Hunted, the Central Park turns into a hunting ground, and all the animal-themed villains learn how it feels to be hunted. Please let me know in the comments if you'd like a more detailed video about one of the stories. So, this was today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and now you know who Craven really is. If you really like this video, you can support me by subscribing, clicking the like button, and allowing all notifications. Until the next time, goodbye true believers!